Okay, so to, in today's notes, we're mainly prepping for the Pythagorean theorem. So before we prep or take a look at doing Pythagorean theorem type questions, we need to review how to simplify radicals. Because Pythagorean theorem being a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to solve for the c squared, we have to take the square root. So on the first page of the notes, it says to simplify the square root of n, factor n so that one of the factors is its greatest perfect square factor. If you don't use the greatest, you can simplify more than one, so that's really not a big deal. But let's write out a list of our perfect squares. Your perfect squares are numbers that have two factors that are equivalent, and it's factor times factor, which gives you a product. So if we just look at the smallest perfect square, so it would be 1 times 1, they have the same factor, is 1. 2 times 2 will give us the perfect square factor 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. Then 25. 36. 7 times 7, 49. 64 is 8 times 8. 9 times 9, 81 and 10 times 10, 100. The vocab, you can go ahead and read that. Okay, the index is indicating your root, so square root or cube root, so it's the number out front, where the radicand is the number underneath the symbol. So let's take a look at 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3 are all perfect squares. So when we take the square root, we get a whole number. Square root of 100 is 10, square root of 49 is 7, and square root of 16 is 4. Okay? Now let's take a look at the examples below that are not perfect square roots. Well, actually, number one is. The negative out front means we're just going to take the square root of 36 and make it negative, so that would be negative 6. Another perfect square looking at um, 1 through 6 is 125. So if you go to the calculator, you take the square root of 125, you get 15. So you always want to double check on the calculator first, okay, to see if the number is a perfect square or not, if it's greater than 100, okay? Oh, and I'm sorry, 125 is not a perfect square. So let's erase that. Ooh. Yep, it's uh, 6 o'clock on a Wednesday evening, so yeah, I'm a little tired. The other perfect square, though, is 16. So this is negative 3 times 16, and negative 3 times 4 is a negative 12. All right, so those that are not, okay, as we typed in, or I typed in, square root of 125, and it's not a perfect square, as I get a uh, non-terminating decimal. But back to 18. So I have to break down 18 into two factors. So I'm going to set up my two radicals so that one is a perfect square. We go up here, and the perfect square that goes into 18 is 9. So 18 becomes 9 times 2. And we put the perfect square factor out front so that we can take the square root of 9, which is 3. We leave the radical 2 alone. 125. Well, it's a multiple. It's got 25 in it. So we divide it by 25 and it goes in 5 times. So this is 25 times 5, which we take the square root of 25. Final answer is 5 radical 5. Now, if you type the decimal in the calculator, um, if you type the radical in, so it'll type in radical 18, you type in 3 radical 2, the decimals should match. Same for the square root of 125 and 5 radical 5, your decimals should match. Number 5, so 2 radical 20, or 2 times the square root of 20. So I'm going to bring down the 2 and factor the 20. The largest perfect square factor of 20 is 4. It's 4 times 5. Taking the square root of 4, we get 2. That's connected, don't forget, to the 2 out front by multiplication. So 2 times 2 would be... 4 radical 5. 
and then one ninth times the square root of 63. So I'm going to bring down the one ninth and factor the 63. Largest perfect square factor of 63 is 9. It's 9 times 7. Taking the square root of 9 is 3. And 3 times 1 ninth becomes 3 ninths radical 7. Which can be simplified because 3 goes into itself once, goes into 9 3 times. So this becomes 1 third radical 7. On the back side, operations with radicals. So we're going to, looks like, add, subtract, and multiply in 7 through 10. In the first one, we're adding. So when you add radicals, you need to check, are the radicands the same? And they are. So we bring down the square root of 3, and then we simply add or subtract the coefficients in front, and 2 plus 5 is 7. This is also an adding question, but the radicands are not the same. So I'm going to simplify the 20, as that's a larger number. So I'm going to bring down the negative 3, I bring down the two radicals, and 20 becomes 4 times 5. Take the square root of 4, which is 2, times the negative 3 out front, and this becomes simplified negative 6 radical 5. Now I can add that to the 4 radical 5, because the radicands match. So because they're both radical 5, we bring that down in our answer, and I add the 4 and the negative 6 to get a negative 2. 9 and 10 are both multiplication, okay? Because when you square something, you're really multiplying it times itself. So now in number 9, when multiplying, the radicands don't have to be the same. So the process is to multiply the coefficients out front. So 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. Then multiply the radicals. So radical 6 times radical 3. Keep the radical, and 6 times 3 is 18. Now that is the correct answer, but it's not simplified. And we always need to simplify. So breaking down 18 into its two radicals, it would be 9 times 2 as we did that on the front. Bring down the negative 8. Take the square root of 9, which is 3, times the negative 8, and we get negative 24 radical 2. Over here, radical or 2 times 2 first, 4. Now, radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. 9 is a perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. Times the 4 out front, we get 12. To finish, we have the Pythagorean Theorem. And there is no practice example, so we're actually going to look at a couple out of your homework, as this note page should have been a little bit longer. The Pythagorean Theorem can be used to find the length of any side of a right triangle. It has to be a right triangle in order to use the Pythagorean Theorem. And it's like squared plus like squared equals hypotenuse squared, but you're used to seeing it a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's go to the homework. And Pythagorean theorem is on the back. So let's take a look at number 24 in the middle. Okay. The legs are your A and B, so it might be good to highlight those. So it's going to be x squared plus 12 squared equals hypotenuse squared 13. If you don't highlight the legs, the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the 90 degree angle. Okay? So this is the hypotenuse. Or your C. So simplifying, we have x squared plus 144 equals 13 squared, 169. Subtract the 144. And we end up with x squared equals 9 minus 4, 5, 6 minus 4, 2, and 1 minus 1, 0. So we have 25. Now take the square root to undo the square. And x equals 5. And let's do one more Pythagorean theorem question. Hmm. I say let's take a look at 28 since it has a radical in it. Uh, all right, I guess we will. But I like the other word type pro uh, problems. 
So the length of two legs, the two legs are what form the 90 degree angle, are two and two radical three. What's the length of the hypotenuse? You could call it x, but I am gonna call it c. So we've got two squared plus two radical three squared. So I'm gonna get rid of the two and actually write that out twice to help me square it, equals c squared. So two squared is four plus two radical three times two radical three is four radical nine. Nine's a perfect square, so we have three times four, which is 12. So four plus 12 is 16, equals c squared. Take the square root, and c equals four. So the hypotenuse is four. And I guess I'll do one more if you want to continue watching. I'll do 26. We have a ladder in length leans against the side of a building. So here's my building. Okay, here's the ground. And then here will be my ladder. They're usually equally spaced. <laughs> you get the idea. All right, anyhow. When uh, our building is going to be perpendicular, we don't have crooked buildings, so it's perpendicular to ground, so we do have a right angle, which gives us a right triangle right here. It says the ladder is 13 feet in length, so this side here is 13 feet. The foot of the ladder, right here, is 5 feet from the building, right here, so this is 5 feet. How far up the building, so from here, here, does the ladder reach, I'll call that x. So because uh, we have a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. So x squared plus 25 equals 169. Subtract 25, we end up with x squared equals 144. Take the square root, and x is equal to 12. How far up the building does the ladder reach? Um, 12 feet.